Hello, I'm Jennifer Berry and I'm here with Colleen Massey to talk about the important topic of special needs planning and disability planning. Uh, Colleen is an attorney and partner at Spiga Daily Pope and Perry and that's a law firm that specializes in estate planning as well as elder issues, special needs planning and disability planning. Colleen chairs both the special needs department as well as the fiduciary services department. She wears important hats and has a passion and love for her uh, advocacy for special needs um, and care of the disabled. And hopefully you'll see that come through with both of us as we continue on in our discussion. Well, thanks so much for having me, Jen. It's always been a pleasure working with you. And how did you get interested? in working with special needs planning and what's your interest in the area? Well, as you know, I have been a financial planner for many, many years. Um, however, about 16 years ago, my dear friend succumbed to cancer and um, she left me guardian to her uh, special needs daughter. And so it has been a journey uh, for me and I have certainly um, grown to learn the importance of planning for these special needs children, um, the many different aspects of it, the, the team approach, all the people that help and partake in that, um, not just the financial aspect that I've been familiar with and have done for years, but also the legal aspect and the um, partnership with uh, social workers and medical field. Um, and so that's you know, how I became interested in it and how I remain, remains a, a focal point of, of mine. Yeah, I mean, did she have things set up for, for when she passed? Was she prepared? Did she have documents? Did she have things in place? You know what, she, as with many other people, um, she had the financials and she had the legal components in place. Um, most of the social and the medical, although it was documented, um, and guardianship wasn't necessarily in place and formalized. She was the guardian. Um, and so, um, but because I was a family friend and, and, and close, you know, in proximity to them, I knew what, I knew how she took care of Ellie. I knew what was important to her. I knew what trips and travels they did. Um, so I luckily had all that knowledge that I was able to incorporate. I knew the family dynamics. Um, so I was able to build on that and build the team around me, the village around me. It sounds like you were totally set up for it. I mean, I see a lot of families come in and they have no support. Okay. A lot of the time someone will spend so much time taking care of their child and dealing with all the things surrounding it that they've never really had the opportunity to build up support networks. Right. And so people will come in to me and there'll be a vacuum. You know, I'll meet with a client and I'll say, well, who's going to step in and be your trustee or who's going to step in and be your guardian? And they'll say, I don't know. I don't have anybody. We've never built those networks. We've been so focused exactly. on taking care of our person. And so that's it's great so that that was true. set up. Yeah. Yeah. And so what do you do when you have a client that comes in and they don't have the planning in place or the support and network um, available? Yeah, so it's it's hard, right? I mean, part of what we what we offer when we do work as in the special needs plan, we, um, we do have people fill out a care plan as well. And that's got all these questions, and a lot of times I think, it's kind of like when you go and do your taxes and you have to organize all your stuff, yeah. kind of the act of organizing all the stuff to even fill out the care plan is a good exercise for mm -hmm. people, so they have to go and think about who, who would they want to help with medical decisions, what what people do they want to have an important part of their child's life? If there are people they don't want to have an important That's part exactly. in the child's life. And we ask things like, what do they like to do on their birthday? You know, yeah. do you want, and what's important to you ethically, morally as a family? Some people really want their child to be able to continue to have religious experiences or travel experience or educational experiences. Like what's, what's your family's kind of culture, mm -hmm. right? So we ask a lot of those questions. We ask them to fill out kind of an in-depth document. And then we start trying to put things together. Um, who could be a financialist, you know, help with finances? Maybe we need a financial advisor. Um, maybe they need someone that could be a trustee. Our firm sometimes fills that role. Do they need to have life insurance? Can we connect them with someone for life insurance? Are there social services we can connect them with to start building that? I met with a client 
today actually and we were talking about where's his son going to live someday when the dad is gone right what are we going to do so i'm going to hook him up with some resources he doesn't need to move out now right but they want to start thinking about these things and what their options are mm -hmm. so we try to make connections and and make a safety net so parents are never replaced when they're um, gone right but we can try to make a net that can fill in some of those voids piecemeal as best we can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't you see um, the peace of mind that offers to the parent? You know, the parent, they don't want to speak about being gone or not part of their lives. Um, but I know, you know, we've worked too with the care plan with a client of special needs and, and just the peace that it gives them when that's documented in, and in place. Right. And when those team members are aware of what the role and responsibilities that they're expecting of them right. um, is communicated. It, it really does go a long way. And it can help people to sleep a little better at night. And then they can start making, you know, making sure they are including people in conversations and they can start to lay that foundation like your friend did. Yeah. 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 And now we're going to move on to more of the uh, specifics with regards to special needs planning. And from your angle, as far as the legal aspects of it, can you um, t share a little bit about how that? how you implement and work with them. Sure, so when a family comes in and they have a family member that has a disability of some sort, we really try to have a holistic approach. We ask a lot of questions. I think probably people think we ask too many questions, um, but mm. we need to know a lot about what's gone on, what kind of benefits the person has, what their abilities are, what their, um, what their support network is and all of that. And then oftentimes we will propose as part of an estate plan, we'll propose a special needs trust or a supplemental needs trust as part of that. And that kind of trust allows the person to receive an inheritance or receive assets, however they may be, but it doesn't jeopardize any kind of uh, benefits that they might otherwise be entitled to from the state or federal government, so that what you're leaving to the person really is an additional benefit to them. Um, they're split into a couple of different kinds. There are first party special needs trusts, there are third party special needs trusts. Sometimes people use the word special needs and supplemental needs, you know, in interchangeably. They're not technically, but people do. Um, and a first party trust is when someone has their own money and they need to se be separate from it in order to collect benefits. And the third party trust is when someone else is leaving a person with a disability money. So they, the money comes from different places and the trusts act a little differently too. So the first party, would that be the actual in, um, disabled individual? That would it's be, money? right, okay. right. So either they've accumulated the funds over their life and now need benefits mm -hmm. and we need to separate them from that money through mm -hmm. a trustee or they've already had a disability and they've got a personal injury um, settlement or they've gotten an inheritance that someone hadn't really planned for so it came yep. directly to them mm -hmm. and we need to put a the way that they can continue to get their benefits and supports is if we kind of put a trustee between them and that money mm -hmm. so the money's not technically okay. theirs anymore mm -hmm. um, that has a little more rules around it than if someone puts the money directly into a trust for you which is called a third party supplemental needs trust and that's got a lot more flexibility so mm -hmm. that's our goal always is mm -hmm. to have the planning done ahead yes. and move it right into a third party trust and the first party trust is more of kind of an em emergency kind mm -hmm. of necessity tool mm -hmm. that we use. Oh, okay, uh, Colleen, from there, can you tell me or explain any specifics that we need to be aware of uh, with regards to setting them up, w with regards to ongoing um, maybe gifting to them or things that the family should be aware of with regards to these trusts? Yeah, so one thing that would really affect you in your practice is beneficiary designations. Um, families will come in all the time mm -hmm. and they'll say everything, you know, be they'll have beneficiary on their accounts and it'll say everything's to my wife and if my wife is gone then to my children or it'll just say to my wife, right, and they'll have no backup. Yeah. But in either of those situations, if the wife had passed before, then the person with the disability would get a share outright. And that puts us in that emergency first party trust situation, which is just too much to get into right now for our conversation purposes. Yes. But it's not ideal. Mm -hmm. Let's just leave it at that. Exactly. It's much better if it says, I'm leaving it to 
Jen's trust instead of it saying to Jen. Mm -hmm. So those beneficiary designations are super important and for that would be on the financial documents as well as for any life insurance or any of those pieces. Mm -hmm. Another piece we want to update wills or anything like that to make sure again <clears throat> they might have had a will that said to my wife and then to my children. Well now we want to say to my wife and my children however mm -hmm. Jen's share is going to her trust. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that we always make sure when we're working with families is we actually give them a letter that says, Dear friends and family, I've set up a trust for Jen. If you want to leave her anything in your will, wink, wink, um, this is how you should name it. So, because that's what happens all the time, is some great aunt somewhere who means well leaves the person $10,000 and it kind of messes everything up. Yes. So if we can let great aunt know that instead of leaving the money directly to Jen, leave it to her trust, that makes, mm -hmm. that helps a lot. And so I will tell people, hand this out at your next family barbecue, yep. let everybody know that your lawyer said you had to, and um, we'll see how it goes. So when we're working with families, I think, you know, what we always, what I always try to keep front of mind is that we're working to improve this person's life, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's all, that's the goal, is to make their life better. So we use the trust for a variety of reasons. Technically, we use it mostly for preserving benefits, right? If there's a benefit that has an asset limit, like Social Security or um, Medicaid, we can make sure that person can continue to get those benefits while they have this extra pot that they can draw from for other needs. Mm -hmm. um, but it also allows someone else to be in charge of their finances, right? So when we're trustee, we partner with someone like you to manage the money so the money continues to grow so they can get the most out of it and the money won't be depleted. Mm -hmm. um, we also kind of have, we also have the expertise to be able to file documents if they need to with probate court or to do work with a CPA to get the taxes done, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but really the primary purpose of this and the reason people set it up is to improve the life of that loved one. Mm -hmm. And I think you've had experience with that, with yeah. being able to work with the young person that you are guardian for. Yeah. And how has, it been, how has it made your life easier and improved her life in your experience? It's actually, it's been amazing. I mean, I, I am able to continue to um, enrich her life the way her parents did. Um, I'm able to send her on trips that I know she loves. I'm able to pay those extras. Um, I'm able to have a cell phone that's easy for her to use as opposed to what might be um, a, something that's given as far as a, a Medicaid benefit. Um, so there's so many things that uh, I'm able to do because I don't have to worry about the financials. I don't have to worry about um, can does the program cover it? You right. know, and is it allowed? So right. um, it has been invaluable yeah. to yeah. my care for her. That's wonderful. So again, such a credit to her family for setting all of that up. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I see people using, you know, if it's a small trust, maybe they're using it more to make sure they have the cable and the phone and all of that taken care of. If it's a bigger trust, then it can be used for all those things, right? Yes. We see people going to Disney or therapeutic horseback riding, or yes. if they love the Red Sox or the Yankees, whatever it may be. Exactly. Right? We see all those different things, and it's, again, that's the reason that their fam that's what gave their family peace. Peace. To yeah. know that they were going to be able to have that mm -hmm. lifestyle and be able to live Maintain. the life that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sounds like you ended up with a really good situation, or she ended up. Yes, with a really we both good did. It yeah. was a win-win, yeah. definitely a win-win. Colleen and I hope that this discussion was helpful, and we hope that thought-provoking, and hopefully will cause some of you to action. Uh, we want you to know you're not alone. That we'd love to partner with you, speak a daily as well as Connecticut Wealth, and help you with your planning needs for your loved ones. Colleen, can you add anything at this time? I would just say, you know, we've hit on a lot of topics and they're complicated topics and um, there's certainly a lot more to all of it. But I do think sometimes people think that special needs planning is only for those with a lot of wealth and it really is for anyone that's got a person in their life that has a disability. There's a lot to think about and you might need to walk through some of those issues regardless of where you are. Um, and we're, like Jen said, you know, there's a team out there for you. So it's worth thinking about some of these things and it might help you sleep a little better at night too. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Jen.